Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Daniel, from CEO from Lilium and uh, Chief Engineer from Lilium. And um, at Lilium, what we do, I should have some slides now. <laughs> what we do is, uh, wait a second. Our mission is to enable a world in which everyone can fly anywhere and anytime. That's entirely new to every one of us. And the way we do this is we are developing the world's first entirely electric vertical takeoff and landing jet aircraft. It's a five-seated electric air taxi, and it's going to be operated in a transportation service. So I'm very sorry we will not sell it to you, but um, you can book the jet on your smartphone. It's going to come, pick you up, fly to your destination, land, and uh, drop you off again. And the great thing about this is it's going to be the same price like an Uber, but it's 300 kilometers per hour fast. And here's an example of how this is going to look like once the transportation service is in place. Let's say we are in Manhattan right now, and you want to go to JFK International. Today, this takes roughly an hour. Once our service is in place, you're going to do the same trip in a five minutes flight. And this is about the same step change like from bicycles to cars. If you think this is far away, here's our full-scale prototype which flew roughly one year ago for the first time. It takes off vertically, climbs to roughly an altitude of around 30 to 50 meters, and it has a series of electric jet engines mounted at the rear wings and the front wings. And you're going to see now that they will tilt in gradually into a more horizontal direction and accelerate the aircraft. And now it's in the middle of its transition flight, and notice that it's going to be exceptionally maneuverable, even in these very low flight speeds. And that's what we need in urban mobility. So it's very unnatural that a plane is flying so slow and it still can do all those maneuvers. At the same time, it's exceptionally low noise. If you compare it to a helicopter, it's a totally different world. And this gives us the access to really the centers of city and to where the people are. So we can directly serve you where you are with this airplane. It's going to back transition now into hover flight. The engines are in vertical position again, and it's going to start its descent for landing. The plane is flying autonomous right now, so there is no person sitting in it. But we're going to change that soon. So here we are. So the beauty of this airplane concept, which is entirely new, is its simplicity. We believe the most simple but yet performance technology and concept will win in any space. And if you com we compare this airplane to classic VTOL aircraft configurations, it doesn't have a tail, it has no rudder, it doesn't have variable pitch, no propellers, no gearboxes, and no water cooling. Just tilting electric jet engines. And these electric jet engines we have developed, they are at the core of the performance of the whole airplane. They come with a whole bunch of advantages, but the biggest advantage is their low noise. And they yield very high speed, and they give us very efficient high range. Additionally, they run on super low vibration, so it's going to be a very comfortable airplane and they can contain the loss of a blade in their duct, so that problem would not propagate from one engine to the next one. And lastly, they run on one single moving part. So they're exceptionally simple and low noise to operate, and that's what we need for a real mass transportation service. And these jet engines mounted in our airplane make the airplane exceptionally efficient. So we can run on one battery charge a distance of 300 kilometers at a speed of 300 kilometers per hour. And if you put this in contrast, it's roughly the same energy consumption per seat like in an electric car we have today, but we're five times faster. But the really biggest concern when we designed the airplane and we thought about which concept we would choose was safety. Remember, we want to operate thousands of these airplanes in urban environments. So we knew from day one we need to have a completely different level of safety 
compared to today's uh, piston engine aircraft. And the way we solve this is by using the concept of ultra redundancy. That means there is no single point of failure on the entire airplane. Any component can fail, and there's always another component which takes over the job of this um, failed component, and you can still go on flying. Additionally, we have a flight envelope protection system that prevents dangerous commands from the pilots from being executed. And if everything goes wrong, we still have a whole aircraft parachute on board that safely brings down the airplane and the passengers on board. So what does this mean? We say we increase the radius of life of people by a factor of five. Imagine every person accepts a certain amount of time spent traveling every day. And if you're five times faster while you're traveling, you can cover five times the distance. And that's why we say we increase your radius of life by a factor of five. But the best thing is the surface you can cover is actually 25 times increased. So this system gives you 25 times the connectivity of the system we have today. But it's not only about speed. It's a lot about many other things like environment and infrastructure. Look at the pictures on the right side. This is how high-speed transportation infrastructure looks today in the Western world. Insane amounts of concrete, insane amounts of money spent, and an insane building time. In our case, on the left side, there is high-speed transportation happening as well, but there is no concrete covering nature. In fact, the system is not even touching nature. The aircraft is inaudible in cruise flight from the ground, and it doesn't emit any CO2. So it's by far the most environmentally friendly means of transportation we can have in the 21st century. And it's extremely quick and flexible to implement. So when we think of the high-speed transportation rail from Berlin to Munich, it took us 15 years to build this track, and it was more than 10 billion in pricing. We can implement a service that is faster than this one in three to six months at less than 1% of the investment, completely flexible. And we can not only do this between Berlin and Munich. We can do this with any place in the world. We can connect the smallest village with the largest city at the same speed that we have between the two big city centers. And this is for the first time in history. So we never were able to build high-speed transportation systems between rural areas because they would never pay off the infrastructure investment. With this system, it's completely different. So we will also see very big cost savings and time increase in the rural infrastructure. And how will this affect our lives? It will affect everything. We can connect states to metropolitan areas. You can live in the countryside and work in cities. This will rebalance the real estate prices. We can completely eliminate transit traffic in cities, and we can make cities greener and more valuable to live in. Now, what we have right now is we see lots of component manufacturers approaching us. We see service providers coming up for this. We see new vehicle manufacturers following the way we have chosen. We see infrastructure providers. We see cities planning for EV toll infrastructure. But we still have quite a bit of a way going. We need to lead a dialogue on infrastructure, on airspace management, on noise regulation. For example, who is building infrastructure? Who is operating it? According to which standards? Can we harmonize them internationally? Who is managing the airspace? According to which standards? We need an airspace that works for everyone, from the small Amazon parcel drone up to the large passenger jet of, of Airbus and, 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 and Lufthansa. And we need harmonized noise regulation in whole Europe, at best in the whole world. And if we do this right, we'll see network effects. We'll, everyone wants to be connected to this network. So we will see more and more landing pads being built. And ultimately, we're going to see exponential growth of that ecosystem. And once we're there, in roughly maybe 20 years from now, I believe that we will at least see 30% of all travel every one of us does in a system like this. And then Lilium's mission is fulfilled. Thanks very much for your attention. We're based in Munich. Approach me.